Hey guys, I'm Rachel, I have hamsters, and today I'm gonna do a video about how to clean hamster sand. Uh, so how did this get started? Um, I was looking at Reddit like a couple months ago and somebody had posted, can you clean hamster sand? And up until that time, I'd never really thought about how to wash hamster sand. It's just not something people talk about in the hamster realm. Everybody sifts their sand with, you know, a little colander, uh, but but I haven't really heard of anyone washing it. And I thought that was kind of an interesting idea and it just kind of stuck in my head. And then a few months after that, I stumbled upon a video from Hammy Time. And uh, Hammy Time, she, um, if you haven't checked her out, she's amazing. And I will put a link down to the video that I watched below so you can check it out. Um, she actually just followed the directions on the back of the Repti Sand bag. So apparently there are directions. I never thought of looking at the bag before, <laughs> but the directions are more or less what you think they are. It's soaking the sand with bleach and then you just filter it with a like cheesecloth or basically a kitchen towel um, and then you bake it. So pretty simple. Um, she did it on this very large scale. She saved all the sand that was dirty after a period of time and then she kind of like soaked it in this big bucket and filtered it. Um, I normally live in a really, really small space in LA. Um, I have like now that I have hamsters, I have even less space. Um, so I couldn't do anything with a bucket. I just can't even get a bucket under my sink. Uh, so I decided to come up with kind of a smaller scale version of that where I can just take one tray at a time or maybe two trays of hamster sand and clean them and just sort of incorporate it into my weekly hamster chores. Um, so it's not such a big like, oh, I got to do this huge thing. It's just something small that I can keep up with. Um, and you know, once I started doing it, I realized how gross <laughs> the hamster sand was. And I'm so glad that I started cleaning it. Um, when you think about it, especially dwarf hamsters and robos, um, they do so much in their sand. They spend so much time in their sand. Even if you give them a lot of sand, they're still spending a lot of time in it. And, uh, you know, they're eating, they're sleeping, they're, they're bathing, they're urinating. So everything they do is in their sand bath. And even if you're good about sifting it and trying to keep it clean, um, I do think that that especially the urine builds up. Uh, so I'm really glad that I started washing and um, I hope this helps you guys um, if any of you are thinking about doing it. And if you already have a method, I would love to hear from you. I think it's interesting that this is just not something that I hear people talk about washing their sand. Um, I hear people or I you know, see or hear people say they sift it um, or they replace it, but I haven't really heard people talk about actually washing it. Um, it makes sense. I mean, it's something we can wash. It's more eco-friendly and also budget-friendly. You don't have to keep buying sand. You can just reuse the sand that you already have um, because sand really should last. Like, there's no reason you should throw it away. So, um, so yeah, I'm very curious to hear from you all and hopefully this helps you. So let us begin. All right, so step one is to just go ahead and sift your sand. So this is a big sand bath from, I believe it's from Steven. He's one of my robos. Um, if you watch my channel normally, he was my first robo. Um, and yes, my true love, <laughs> little Steven. Um, so Steven, Steven does urinate in his sand, although he's kind of sporadic about it. It can be in different places. So I constantly have to check all over to see um, what he's up to. <laughs> Sometimes I also think he does it like that because he's trying to mark. Um, I do notice that he tends to kind of urinate um, kind of all over his cage and I do wonder if that's sort of more of a territorial sort of thing. So anyway, once I sifted it, I just put it back in there so I can begin the cleaning process. So you're going to need a bowl and that sifter and then some sort of cloth that water can go through. This is like a washcloth. I think ideally if you had a more lightweight towel, like kitchen towel, that might work better. But this was fine. Honestly, it worked fine. It's what I had. And then I just ran some water over it um, and I let it filter through. It did take some time for the water to get through all the sand, so I just kind of had to be patient, um, <laughs> just let it get through. And then the thing that, what I like about having the bowl underneath is you can see how clean the sand is. So you're gonna wanna keep doing this process until the sand is looking 
pretty clear after you dump out that water. Um, so on the first pass, uh, you can't tell from this video, but I could tell the water was a little bit yellow. Like I could actually see that I was washing away some urine from the sand. So I just kept doing it until I felt like the, the yellow color was gone. So once you've washed your sand until you feel that it's clean and you're noticing that the runoff is clear, uh, you can go get your baking tray. I lined mine in some tin foil because I just thought it'd be easier to clean up. Um, and then you're gonna take that rag and dump out the sand. Um, it is a little messy, so I would do that in the sink. And then just go ahead and spread it around evenly with your hands. Um, and you can put that to the side and we're gonna use it again with our next batch. So now you can start cleaning the rest of your sand until you are finished with that tray. So of course you want to preheat your oven. Um, I baked my sand at about, two, I guess 300. I thought it was 200. <laughs> um, sand is pretty resilient. Uh, I didn't want to overdo it. I was a little nervous. So I think, yep, I went with 250. Um, but I think you can push sand up to 400. I just was being a little bit careful. And also I live in LA, so I didn't want to overheat my <laughs> kitchen. Um, but Basically anything over 200 should be safe to disinfect anything that's in the sand. So it just might take longer if you put it on lower heat. And then you can go ahead and put that in the oven. I started with a timer for 20 minutes. Um, it actually ended up taking quite a bit longer, but I think 20 minutes is like a good test of time. So you can set a timer for 20 minutes and then come back to it and see how it's looking. All right, so this is after the 20 minutes. You can see that it's dry, but it's it's starting to dry, but it's not really dry yet. Um, I actually think this is a good part of the process is to mix it up every 20 minutes and get rid of those clumps um, because it will probably dry in some areas and then be wet in others. Uh, so yeah, go ahead, take a spoon, mix it around. Um, definitely use oven mitts because it will be hot. <laughs> and then you can put it back in the oven for another 20 minutes and um, keep checking on it until it seems thoroughly dry and ready to use. In the meantime, while your sand is baking, you can go ahead and clean up the mess from cleaning the sand. So first I started by cleaning the sand tray. I figured if I'm gonna clean the sand, I may as well give the total situation a uh, wipe down so that way he can have a fresh start. And then I went ahead and cleaned um, the rag that I used and there was a lot of sand left over on that rag. So I actually saved it and added it to the pan. <laughs> um, I didn't wanna waste too much sand there. And then just cleaned everything out. If I didn't say this before, um, I did use a clean rag. I know it looks a little dirty cause it's a rag, but um, I did use a clean rag. It's important that your, whatever you use, your towel, your rag is clean because you don't want any cleaning solution to leach onto the, uh, to the sand. All right, so now my 20 minutes are up. I went ahead and checked the sand again, and you can see it's looking a lot better, like so much drier, but I still see a few clumps that are wet in there. Um, so I just went ahead and stirred it around and tried to break up any, any wet clumps. Um, and then I put it back in. It's pretty dry, but I just wanted to be super sure that everything was really clean and that there's no lingering bacteria or anything that could uh, get back to little Steven. So <laughs> I figured better safe than sorry. I'm just gonna go ahead and bake this until it looks super, super dry. Thank you. 
All right, so here's my final sand. As you can see, I let it dry for a while, so it's totally cool. Um, if, you know, you definitely don't wanna give your hamster hot sand. So if you can't touch it, your hamster can't touch it. Um, if you're gonna do this and your hamster only has one sand bath, I would probably do this early in the morning so you have a lot of time before your hamster wakes up uh, before they get their sand bath back. Um, so this is a great Saturday or Sunday chore when you have the whole day to kind of like hang out, um, you know, let that sand get really nice and cool, and then you can pour it back in there. And you can see, look at how nice that looks. It's so, it really is a satisfying chore to do. It's like so silky smooth. I was so excited for Steven. <laughs> well, I had hoped to end on a beautiful video of Steven bathing in his sand. It is really hard to get a video of him. He is very shy. Even getting him in this cup sometimes is difficult, but um, I did manage to get him to the playpen for a little bit of time the other day, um, and he seems to be enjoying his sand as usual, um, rolling in it, eating in it, you know, doing everything in it. Um, I put that cork flat over it, and um, it gives him a nice hide. He seems to enjoy that, so... Uh, yeah, I would love to hear from all of you out there, what you do with your sand, how your hamsters are doing, all that good stuff. Um, I hope you all are having a great start to your 2022, and um, I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for joining me today.